Hello everyone and welcome to week number 7, day 2 of the Oceanic Pro League. My name is Timmy and join me is Switch Bay. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. Yes, now we've got here Chiefs vs. Law Gaming in this final week of the Oceanic Pro League. It is worth noting that Chiefs and Law can no longer move to a different position on the ladder uh, after the resource of this match. Chiefs are firmly placed in number 3, whereas Law cannot enter into the fourth match. What do you think we're going to see from uh, from these two teams uh, switch? Uh, I think we're going to see something a little bit different from maybe Chiefs. Maybe they want to try something out that they've kind of thought about, maybe done in scrims, might have been successful, might have been a bit unsuccessful, but something they kind of want to focus on going into the qualifiers in, I believe it's two weeks. So probably something a little bit strange from them. Um, and from Law, I'm, I'm not really too sure what to expect, but they don't have their uh, their captain and support shielding this week. So it's going to be very interesting to see if they're going to shuffle around the teams and what's going to be happening there. Yeah, if today is going to be the day to try anything new, try and experiment for Challengers Cup, now's the time. Like you said, Switch, Child is not in this game. Subbing in for him is going to be Enquad 1 0, their uh, su uh, substitute. But. As you said, we may see some uh, some strange things coming out here, a bit of experimentation. So let's go ahead and go into our picks and bans here. And we can see that the first ban coming out from the Chiefs is going to be Bologna. Bologna, she's a no-brainer. She's relatively strong. And probably something Elkira just doesn't want to have to go up against. Maybe they got something up their sleeves that requires Bologna to definitely not be in Law's team comp. Yes, and uh, another substitute coming in. El Curo isn't going to be in this game either. Wizard is going to be taking his place in the solo lane. So, a little bit of a, a bit more of a wild card. We don't really know what he's capable of in this solo lane. We saw him play ADC not too long ago, uh, filling in for Graf, and he worked quite well with his team. Second band coming out here is going to be the Circat. Okay, it's a little bit of a strange one. I suppose that they've done a bit of their research and they've seen that Maxon likes those highly aggressive mobile junglers. So the Circuit's a bit of a no-brainer and maybe they want to draft some form of healing for their team comp and they want a Circuit firmly, firmly away from that. We're going to see Chiefs respond to that one with an Athena ban. As we've mentioned countless amounts of times, Athena's really strong and she's a flex pick as well. So she can be played in solo jungle and as a support. So... It doesn't look like Chiefs want to give Law any versatility or you know, doubt themselves a little. They, they don't want to, sorry, doubt the lineup that Law's uh, drafting at the moment. Chiefs also have to be careful what they give up to Law because we have seen Law Gaming be very aggressive early on. A lot of early on invades trying to steal away some buffs. Next band coming out is going to be the Capri. Capri, that's, a, that's an interesting one. I suppose Law don't want to see Chiefs bust out with something as we saw yesterday, as we spoke about yesterday, it's a, the new God into this kind of rotation of gods you are allowed to play. He's just been approved and gone through his testing after he's become live to, to the servers. So I suppose Lord, I want to see him come out with, uh, sorry, see Chiefs come out with anything, I know, cheeky or sneaky or anything like that. Any team comp that's really OP that people haven't really caught on to yet. So I guess it's a bit of a safety uh, safety ban, but a strong ban nonetheless, because he is a very, very strong support. Yes, and speaking of supports, we can see the Chiefs are going to pick up the Sylvanas as their first pick here. Sylvanas really showing his stuff, really just securing that place as the number one support. He's got a very strong presence in those team fights throughout the entire portion of the game, and he's had a lot of success in the OPL so far. Yeah, he's just been played very, very well. Admittedly, it's not um, too I suppose, difficult to really get Sylvanas going in a lane or your team. He gets comp. himself going. Yeah, exactly. He's got his heel, he's got his root, he's got his pull, and he's got his massive knockup. So, given that his kit is so versatile uh, and you kind kind of draft many team comps around a Sylvanas, he's the no brain first pick support. And Chiefs are going to snap that one up pretty quickly. Yes, and Law Gaming, for their first two picks, we are going to see an Aphrodite and a Sun Wukong. Sun Wukong we have wow. seen in the OPL uh, here and there being put into the solo lane, and actually performing quite well. 
However, we don't normally see an Aphrodite game picked up, and with Wukong, you'd think they'd go into solo lane. However, Aphrodite kind of struggles a little bit in the mid lane. Yeah, I can definitely understand now why Law wanted to ban out that circuit. Oh yeah. So that's a lot of that's a lot of healing there from the Aphrodite and the Wukong as well. Late game that fight, if the Aphrodite is connected to that Wukong, oh, that's God. difficult to deal with. The Chiefs are definitely gonna respond to that one with a Chunga and a now Kwong. Chunga, I like that pick up there. The anti heal on the Chunga heal will be a little bit irritating for the Aphrodite to deal with. And just heading on to a late game, Chunga is you can't fight it. Like, you will die 90% of the time. And Al Kwong getting through, that's a, that's a bit of an interesting one. I thought that one would have been banned out. Al Kwong generally does get banned out. We, it's safe to say that we're going to see Maxim going on that one. Like you said earlier on, Maxim really likes his high damage, high... Uh, you know, he does, Al Kwong does have a bit of mobility, but so much damage. I do like uh, the pick from the Chunga though, with the Wickening Curse gain a nerf. It's more important now to start building more anti-healing through abilities and your items. If you build a Divine Rune on a Chunga, her uh, Petal Dance can end up giving a 90% healing reduction, which is massive. But another form of anti-healing is going to be the Odin pick. That's also a very interesting one. Very different kind of uh drafting that we we're seeing from the first three picks from law mm. here very out of the ordinary we don't see this very often but very front Odin, line that's a that's an interesting one being picked up really early, like this early as well i'm um, gonna be it's gonna be very interesting to see so they kind of picked a bit of picked up a bit of heal and then Chiefs have responded with a small amount of heal, and then they're just like anti heal, like pure anti heal with the Odin pickup from Law. We are going to see the bans from Law Gaming are going to ban out Arpwash. Arpwash is just still so strong. He is a little bit less uh, potent with the slow reduction off, completely taken off of his ultimate, but still a lot of anti healing punishment, as well as a lot of burst damage, unbelievable amounts, as well as the fact that we've seen the Hun Bat showing up as well, but that's going to get banned out by, by the Chiefs. They don't want to give that to Census. Yeah, Hun Bats and Al and Hun Bats just has such a large, large team fight potential, and you pair that with an Odin, and it's... Oh, God. Yeah, yeah Too you're, much. Not, you're not going to have a very, very good one there. No. Nah. Um, but Law are going to pick up a Yanis. That's going to the mid lane, most likely, most definitely, going towards the mid lane. Yanis, as we've spoken about, has good clear. Get his team from one point to another with his ultimate. Ultimate does incredible amounts of damage the more it travels. And he's got his slow, and he can portal himself to safety, and also portal for a bit of harass in lane. So Giannis is a very versatile pick, and a very solid pick, and I'm actually surprised that it got through this far. Can I just point out the elephant in the room, though? Aphrodite, Giannis, Odin, and Sun Wukong. That's, like, three, mid three solo laners, one of which can work in the mid lane with a bit of difficulty, and a solid mid laner. This is a bit of an interesting draft that Law have got, but continue on with the picks and bans here, we can see that Neath and Hercules are going to get picked up by Chiefs. Uh, Neath is just a very, very safe ADC. She can oh, backflip yeah. from uh, most danger, and her clear, as it, her main form of clear, is the Spirit Arrow, which passes through all the minions and does incredible amounts of damage, as well as rooting. Um, so it's just a really, really solid pick. And we are seeing a lot of healing coming out from both teams on uh, through these drafts. The Neath has her uh, has her heal as well as Hercules having a heal as well. So, yeah, we're seeing we're seeing a lot of healing coming out after the this uh, nerf to the weakening curse. People can start to get away more with the these heavy healing compositions, just really regenning and just keep on fighting. That's what Oceana really likes to do: just continue on fighting for as long as possible. So if they can keep up in their health. They can keep up in the fight as well. The final pick up here, we're going to see finally an ADC, a Hunter. It's Ulla. Awesome. I kind of like the Ulla up here. You've kind of got a lot of the control from the Wukong and the Odin. 
So the Oolp will probably be able to get out quite a few Axe Stuns to prolong and chain up CC, as well as being able to just drop incredible amounts of damage. I think the Oolp pickup here is very, very good. Very good. It does also allow them to have a bit more of a late game presence and a lot of single target damage going onto those towers and objectives. We are going to take a short break here as we take a quick look at our sponsors, but right afterwards, we'll be right back with game number one. The new high-performance Rig 500 headset from Plantronics is designed to match the skills of an aspiring eSport player with the gear they need to win. The new modular system gives you the power to adapt, upgrade, and personalize your headset for the task at hand. The Rig 500 series of gaming headsets are engineered to deliver the perfect combination of durable lightweight comfort in an immersive audio environment. 7.1 surround sound and 24-bit audio provide a stunning 360-degree sound field with directional audio. 40mm drivers with low-frequency resonators provide crisp highs and boosted bass. Clear voice noise cancelling technology provides clear communication to your teammates. From the headset company that equips the pros, the 500 series was crafted to meet the needs of esports and competitive players around the world. The new Rig 500 series of headsets from Plantronics. Respect the training. Reactions win. When the world needs conquerors. When being rare is not enough. And even Epic fails. It's time to create your own fate to become legendary. No matter what kind of enemy you face, or what kind of game you play, you can become the craftsman of your own legend. Welcome back everyone to the week number seven, day number two, game number one of the Smite Oceanic Pro League. My name is Timmy and joining me today is Switch Bay. We are so excited to be casting this game between Chiefs Esports Club and Law Gaming. It is going to be a ripper, but first we need to introduce our teams. Yes. Start that one off, Timmy. Right, right, yo. Fine, on the left side of your Spectre UI, on the bottom side of your meme map, we've got Chiefs Esports Club. Wizard is in the solo lane as Hercules. Maxon's gonna be running around the jungle as Al Quan. Crazy Aussie's gonna be in the mid lane, dancing around as Chunga. And your duo lane is gonna be Linky Bill and Gruff, playing Sylvanas and Neath. And on the right side of your Spectre UI, under the red health bars, we have got Law Gaming. And quad 1-0 is going to be your all solo laner. Senses is going to be in the jungle as Odin. Goldie is going to be your mid lane Giannis. And your strange duo lane composition is going to be Dante and Shrek on Aphrodite Wukong. This so, is going to be an interesting yeah. one. This is something we don't particularly see very often. Probably in a few casuals or the odd ranked game. But not particularly in a competitive game. How do you think this one's going to fare out? I think that Law Gaming may find themselves struggling a little bit in certain areas which you would normally not see. 
However, they may be able to find some strengths in other places. Look at this where... invade on the left Ooh, yes. side. We saw that Gruff and Linky Bill cleared out the left mid camp, and now they're looking for a bit of aggression, trying to take that uh, attack speed buff away from oh. Shrek and Dante. Shrek got it though. It? Shrek got it yes. though. He did Shrek pick that up. Yeah, Gruff is in one. a lot of danger there. Gain very low. The love birds do hit them. Is there going to be enough damage? That single stick comes out there, and that is a quick first blood for Shrek. And that... we. If Stretch. we look over towards our middle lane, we can also see Maxon is incredibly low. And Maxon gets poked out wide a little bit there. He's just gonna walk near his Chunga. Chunga's gonna heal him up a little bit. He's not gonna be doing too much in this early game, but late game, that ch when that Chunga gets online, that heal will be doing quite a bit as well. There's a lot of damage. Um, back towards the left side of the map, we do see Linky Bill is level one with about a quarter, maybe about a third of his health. Um, having to just sit under tower while Shrek and Dante just put the pressure on. They're going to be denied out only the one creep of gold due to the tower. Which isn't yep. too bad, but they are fairly behind in that duo lane due to that first blood. Yeah, the first blood is going to go ahead and put them behind a little bit. And they're going to get aggressed on even more. This is going to be an interesting duo lane to see indeed. Linky Bill in again getting just focus out there. Just what, uh, what are we all looking to get here with this Wukong Aphrodite duo lane? It seems to be a lane of huge aggression when the waves meet. Clear your lane before uh, Gruff and Linky Bill manage oh, to be able lane. to do it. And then... Just go for the kill. Go for damage. Go for poke. Try and get them as low as you can so that they can't contest. You've got the sustain from Dante on the Afro with the heal. So, you're just actually seems a little bit um a bit unkillable there a little bit unkillable indeed wukon gained that early on defenses being a warrior linked up to an aphrodite it also means that the uh the soulmate passive from the aphrodite is going to allow shrek to keep up in his mana sustainability especially if uh dante has any kind of meditation or blue pod we don't see, actually we do see the meditation. DM Brandon would enjoy this one. Linky Bill gained a crest on even further. Shrek game pulled in underneath the tower, taken down incredibly low, but the Lovebirds is going to be enough to bring him back up. But Max and Crazy Aussie are on their way. They may be able to find themselves a kill here. There are no wards on the side of Law in this left side jungle. This two-man rotation could be a little bit devastating, but they are just going to back off. Maxon is level 5, and so is Crazy Ozzy. Maxon's going to find the kill onto Dante. Through space and time comes off to left, but it's just out of the way. Maxon is going to execute Shrek, pick up the kill there, and make for the double kill. And it looks like they do want to aggress on Census here. His jump is down. He's level 5, and the pull through the, the wall from Linky Bill. Superb stuff from Linky Bill there, and Gruff is going to be credited to that kill there. And now on the solo side, solo side, Escavate coming out there. The tower is going to get the last shot onto Anquad there, and that is going to credit Wizard with that kill. 4 to 1 is Chiefs and Law Gaming. That was an incredible past uh, beginning. Like the past three minutes have just been so action packed. We saw Chiefs wanting to go for the invade. It didn't particularly work. They managed, they, sorry, they got first blooded and the kill was credited to, to Shrek there on the Wukong. Then a big four man rotation onto the left side. Maxon did Maxon things as he always does and picked up a double kill there, which is really going to put him far ahead. And the one player on Chiefs you don't want to be ahead is most definitely Maxon. I'm sure everyone would agree on that one. Max has just been incredibly strong if he does manage to find any kills early on. Getting himself that double kill is going to allow him to try and snowball even more so on the Alquan. Just at what point do you say that Alquan is just too big? It just needs to stop. Uh, he never gets there. Until he's running. <laughs> <laughs> he, ne he never gets too big. He's always just going to be sitting there and doing lots and lots of damage. I don't think there's a point to where he gets too big i think he's always capable of doing incredible amounts of damage if he's you're a little bit behind yeah. you just need the help like you need the he's, support there he's one of the gods that just the, the longer it goes on the worse and worse it gets there's no point where he loses momentum and he does come on fairly early with that dragon call and wild storm doing incredible amounts of damage even after these slight changes through the patch 
Yeah, not only that, but his, his attack speed is just ridiculous. Oh, mid lane, they'll go it again. Incredibly low. Waxing Moon hits him and the execute. The king of the eastern uh, seas is going to come down on soon. Sans is gaining incredibly low. Tries to shield himself with the Raven Call. It is enough for now to keep him alive. However, World River coming in on this way. That did get boy blocked by someone, I believe. Maxon trying to run through this jungle. Dante misses the axe. Bladed Arrow uh, doesn't uh, land to secure the kill. Maxon retreating even further. The Linky Bill, three man, four man, Ralph Atara trying to peel for his team and Lord Gaming, three space and time coming through there. Misses Maxon, Shrek and incredibly low coming under the tower, but no, that's his decoy. The real one is perfectly safe. Fooled ya. That was a really, really incredible little engage there by Maxon. However, I believe he did stick around a bit too long. Left-hand jungle, we do see Gruff getting caught out by the rotation over from oh, Dante. Dante and Dante's gone. Shrek, but Dante just too low. Shrek's here, half health, no mana to work with, and Maxon's gonna pick up another double kill. That's two double kills in six minutes, and it looks like Chiefs are just gonna want to take that goal fury away. But Census, Census doesn't want that to happen. He wants Census to say does something have, about that. Census does have the Ring of Spears. The Bird Bomb will be enough to chunk some people. Absolutely chunks down Linky Bell, but the ring falls immediately for some reason there. I'm not too sure what happened. Census gained out incredibly low. Gold Everyone Fury. is Gold just Fury so walks low. Through it, destroyed that wall. Oh, the Gold Fury just broke, just barged through it, kicked it down. Just said, I'm not having any of this. He can't cage me. Gold Fury just saved Gruff's life there. Oh, and that Gold was... Fury's a real MVP. <laughs> Gold Fury, I didn't, I didn't actually know that happened. I knew the Titan did that, but I didn't realize the Gold Fury also did yeah, that. That's why Anher can't um, solo the Gold Fury as early as he would like to, because it just destroys All right. the world. Yeah. Oh, that's that's interesting. Just if we take a quick look at our graphs, luckily that Gold Fury didn't uh, fall. Otherwise, the go our gold difference would be exponential towards Chiefs. We can see that it's only 500 XP as well as 500 gold in favor of Chiefs. Yeah, that's a little bit strange, just given that Chiefs are currently seven and one. Yeah. Oh, sorry, seven for one. Oh, but mid lane now. Goldie Max in a bit of that danger. Wall, some Gold. pressure onto Goldie, and Goldie's just gonna force his ult away. I don't know why he wanted to ult towards Max, and he wouldn't have had the damage to kill him. His safer option would have been ulting towards a wall and just trying to get himself out of there through his portal. But. No harm, no foul. He managed to get out and still maintain a fair amount of health to probably stay for another wave or two. That Depending also on if means... Maxim wants him dead. Because if Maxim wants someone dead, they die. Pretty much. Alquan, he looks at someone, half their health just goes. That's how it works. Does mean, though, that the through space and time is gone cooldown now, so... If Maxon does gank him again, he may not have that survivability, or if there's a team fight, he's not going to be able to rotate himself around, as well as perhaps move sensors through the map. Exactly right. Over to, like, thinking of the gank as well, he doesn't even have beads on by now, and usually a mid laner should have beads by about 8 minutes, and he has backed. He's, def he's back to get his pen boots, so he probably should have waited just maybe about a wave or two more and saved up a little bit of gold so that he could finish his boots, as well as picking oh, up the Oh, left hand beads. side though, Dante getting incredibly low, is on the ex execute threshold, but Undying Love is going to shield him for that, he's trying to juke around, Wildstorm touches him though, Sh Maxon incredibly low, Wrath of Tarot coming up, Maxon does fall to the way of Goldie, Ring of Spears trapping in Chiefs there, but Scruff does get taken up by Shrek, by the Tickle Stick, and now Linky Bill will be in the next to fall, favoured to Goldie. That was fantastic work there by Goldie. Managed to pick up the double kill there and make it a three for one engagement. Only Dante dropping there for the side of Law Gaming. And that fight probably would have rattled Chiefs a little bit, would have put them on the defensive. It's strange to see that this. Well, strange team composition is actually doing fairly all right. Shrek is two, two, and two. Dante a little bit falling behind, zero, three, and one. However, they he is still keeping up in levels, only one level behind Gruff. Yeah, you're exactly right. There, Aphrodite currently being level eight, three deaths, one assist, no kills. Not really going to help her out. Really not going to help her achieve that late game that the Aphrodite, where where an Aphrodite really thrives. Um, however, she did opt, oh, sorry, Dante did opt for the Shoes of the Magi, so he was going to have Penetration. Instead of getting Shoes of Focus for the cooldown, so your, your ultimate and your heal and your, your stun and your knockback are going to be all oh. up at the same time, 
Oh, well, Melee Vamp Goldie is feeling the wrath of Maxim once again. Waxing Moon doesn't land through space and time. It's going to allow him to retreat over towards this dual lane. Chiefs are going to have to just try and look for what they can get here. They may be looking for a Gold Fury. I would not recommend them going for a Gold Fury. We do see Shrek a little bit around the outside. Sensors going straight in the middle. There goes the Bird Bomb doing incredible amounts of damage. No one getting dangerously low at this stage though. The Gold Fury will be leashed and Shrek's just going to ox out of there and knock up a few people. Dante's going to link to him and try and get him a heal because he's relatively low. But the power Oh, the Blink execute from Maxon! does secure the kill onto Shrek. He hung around just a little bit too long on too low health. Now Maxon falling in again. Brother Terror going down onto Goldie. Maxon is looking for the Dante in backline with Gruff hot on the heels. Spirit Arrow does hit there and the Nundine Love is forced out there to try and keep Dante alive. Dante is going to be poked out of this one. He won't be able to come back into this engagement. If Chiefs decide that they want to go back to the Gold Fury. Goldie's also relatively low. The only one that's full health here is Census, and he is running away. Running away yeah. from that 3v1. That's a smart choice. Now, I like the way Chiefs are playing this one. They're kind of letting Crazy Ozzy jump up there, do Chunga things, chunk people down for a ton of health. Oh, oh Chiefs goes. do manage to secure that Gold Fury. Through space and time, not managing to get that. Ram Spears is down. Linky getting fairly low. Maxon gets picked up by Census. Linky once again falling to the way of Goldie. And Th Waxing Moon is going to uh, do some damage there. Ma Crazy Aussie game picked up by Shrek. The clone of Shrek is now beating onto Graf, but the tower will keep him alive there. Take away that decoy. I just want to mention something like super badly, like we don't need to shout it a bit too loud, but Maxon 7 and 2. Already? What? Max Maxon is 7 and. He is almost all of the kills on the side of Chiefs Esports. As good as that is, it's also a little bit detrimental oh, to that lane, team. World Weaver coming out there. Excavate also coming out. And Quad is incredibly low. Uses the Invigorate to try and get some speed and run away from Wizza. And now he's just going to be have to back off here over towards this left-hand side. We can see Linky is gripping back up with Gruff. They may be looking for something. Shrek Ox forms out to safety. It's a very interesting game. I kind it, of expected yeah, a lot least. more um, of lore coming out with a lot more aggression than they currently are. I didn't see them invade, do their typical invade strat on the purple buff, as I know. Oh, Census! He gets eaten up by Max, and he did use the Raven Call sh uh, uh, to shield himself, but shields don't count as actual health, so the uh, execute range was still completely valid, and Dante getting forced out by Gruff. Gruff is just getting too strong for this Aphrodite to really just stay in the lane. I don't know if it's too, Gruff is getting too strong or if Dante is just falling too far behind. He doesn't have the cooldowns on him like we mentioned earlier, but oh, he's got he's got the penetration. But I don't think they will be able to carry him over towards the late game. As we can see, he's just getting poked out under tower by Gruff, and it. You had those cooldown boots, you'd be able to heal up and sustain yourself a lot more often than you currently are. So I think those pen boots are a little bit detrimental. We do see a restored artifact onto Dante. He may be going into the Kronos pendant for that uh, extra CDR, but I do I do have to agree. The CDR boots, the shoes of focus, may have been a bit more of uh, of a current of a uh, relevance. Waxy Moon coming out onto the mid lane. Census is has to try and run away. Does get picked up by Crazy Aussie. Maxon poking in here. A little bit too late, but still relevant. They are going to try and force their aggression on towards this mid lane. Axe though coming out. Doesn't connect with anyone. And Chiefs, they're kind of splitting up. Some people are going towards this uh, mid tower, whereas others are going back into the jungle. I think the thing that's really losing out on lore in these team fights here is. Enquad just isn't in these fights. Enquad needs to be rotating before Wizard does. Admittedly, in the right lane, Wizard right now is pushing down that tier 1, most likely going to get it with that wave that he's currently got. But Enquad needs to be rotating around because the physical damage on the side of Lore at the moment is a little bit lacking. It's not as sustained. So you'll have the big bird bomb from Sensors and you'll have the cudgel from Shrek, but there's no sustained damage. It's kind of just like, ugh, here, here's a bit of damage. And we'll do you guys have heals, so you'll be able to heal them up. Even more so that Shrek is building into the Sovereignty, the only real power that he has is that Blue Stone and the Warrior Tarbi. 
So not a whole lot, uh, especially towards this mid portion of the game, that early sort of power spike that Wukong has is pretty much gone now. Yeah, just something to note here. Dante's currently got 1,500 gold in hand. Yep, exactly. And he's just going to back off right there. I would have backed off the moment I had that 500 gold to try and finish off that Chronos Pendant because those cooldowns are needed. They are so, so needed. And now he's got them. And he's also got, uh, he's got the Imperial Helmet. Maybe he'll looking... He'll most likely be going into the Lotus Crown there. Which is also yeah. some good mana sustain, as well as a bit of tankiness. And that passive that you're going to be giving to your... Uh, to your lover you are attached to whenever you go for your heal. Your lover, your soulmate. Basically, you see Aphrodite running around with a pink little laser running in between her and her uh, teammates. They do receive a lot of healing from your... Uh, lovebirds as well as the fact that they do get the actual mana sustain even when you do use the meditation yeah also uh increased movement speed i believe by a small yes. amount but uh still very very helpful movement speed is one of those things that even the littlest bit is very noticeable trying to get a bit oh, of yeah. aggression onto dante there his auto attacks are hitting for a lot but unfortunately he did miss the spirit arrow which would have been the main lot of damage there but fight breaking out in the left jungle take it away timmy Big Mimbrath Tower coming up, crippling down Law Gaming. Gold Senses has already fallen. Shrek is in a dangerous spot. Somersault Cloud is popped there, and Dante is taken up in the backline by Graf. Moving back towards this Gold Fury area. Linky Bill incredibly low, gets picked up by Goldie and Quad Gang. Crazy Aussie, Chief Assign, the fall here. But Graf comes back with a kill onto Anquad. Goldie just barely getting out, but oh, Wizard Wizza. finds him in the backline. So World Weaver coming out onto Shrek, that is going to be forcing out the bees, and Wildstorm cleans up the kill for the deer side. That was incredible plays there. Both teams as well. We did see Law wanting to group up and try and put on a bit of aggression, but Chiefs just... I suppose they're just a bit more practiced in a situation like that. They didn't need Gruff in that fight at that first bit of the engagement where sensors went down. They didn't need him there. He was off in the left lane. He was keeping Dante out and managed to one v uh, take out the solo kill over onto Dante, stopping quite a lot of healing coming out from that team fight. If Dante would have been alive there, probably would not have been a deer side. They would have been able to heal up quite a few people there. Gruff is currently six level 16 with five kills, two deaths, and seven assists. He has. He's just going to be destroying Dante. As we see now, every auto attack that hits Dante is just chunking him for so much damage, and Dante isn't able to kind of sustain himself through that with the heal, even though he does have a bit of physical protection and some cooldowns. Yes, but Dante is three levels behind Graf, so just... He doesn't... There's just no presence in this left-hand lane for Law Gaming. Dante just can't not, cannot keep up with Graf. The wave clear is too strong, the poke is too strong, it's, he just needs help over here. He needs someone to babysit him for a little while, just as he farms up. Through space and time coming over, as I was mentioning, babysitting Dante a little bit. They're going to grass onto Graf. Every member of Lord Gaming here, Linky Bill, looking in here. No Wrath of Terror just yet. There's Maxon in the back line, taking down Goldie oh incredibly quickly. Maxon continuing. Big Wrath of Terror. Now Senses is underneath the Execute Threshold, but Graf does pick that up. Waxy Moon comes out, forcing out the Undying Love and the Somersault Cloud. Don't grab that one, Maxon. That's a fake. That's a fake Shrek. He's off in the back line. Dante is going to be the one to get gobbled up. And Quad gains stunned out by the World Wave as well. Drop down by Maxon. He's going to get incredibly low. Invigorate does manage to game away a little bit, but Wooza says no. Kobe! Yeah! Yeah, oh, Wiz with that Kobe. He was getting away on a little bit of health, and Wiz was like, you know what? It's not happening. I'm going to throw a big rock at your face. <laughs> Managed to pick up the kill there. That was a really incredible engagement there from Chiefs. Really surprised with Linky Bill's performance here. I did not expect him to be landing so many blind pulls on Sylvanas. He, he managed to pick up a pull. I can't remember who it was on. I think it might have been Dante uh, without a stun or anything, and pulled him back towards the team. Really, really good work there, as well as getting that awesome like just oh real spears in this mid lane underneath the tower wax moon coming out stun out two members but senses and shrek are gonna fall to the way of chiefs and they're gonna continue onto this tier two uh, tower try and get it down as quickly as possible there it goes and now maxon not not having enough mana he's gonna have to try and run back away try and sustain themselves up do you reckon they could be looking towards a fire giant anytime soon 
Well, you do see Shrek and Senses both dead for the next just a, just a under 20 seconds, and that's a lot of their tankiness. So, if Lord decide that they want to try and fight them over the Fire Giant at this point, even though Chiefs are backing and it's not going to happen, <laughs> um, it probably would have been very, very bad for Lore, seeing as it will be a 5v3 and you've got no one really to peal for you. Or you've got your Yana Salty, so you can, your CC immune, you can get out, your friends can get out. The Aphrodite ult would be up and Enquad's jump would be up and available to him. So they might have been able to get out, but I really don't, I really, sorry, I really would not suggest it. We are going to see Chiefs just want to take that win and back. They managed to get a bunch of towers, a bunch of gold, and just in, increase their lead. It's now 23 to 9, and quickly heading over towards the graphs, we see that Chiefs have taken it to a 15k XP lead, as well as a 12k goal lead, and that is huge for 20 just, minutes. Just absolutely huge, and the only person who's level 20 in the entire game is Maxon at the moment, with 12 kills, 2 deaths, and 8 assists. Just absolutely massive in the golden All XP praise difference. Maxon. Maxon. All praise Maxon. Uh, Shrek I don't understand how he low. does it. He has a way of just being there always at the right time. Yeah. And um, he's like he's such a young kid too. Like su such an intelligent player. Yeah, very mechanically skilled and just rotates when he really needs to. He's at the right place at the right time, and that really allows him to have such a strong influence. It's even easier for him playing the Alquan because you've got so much damage from the word go. And you've got that invisibility from the water illusion. You see this grouping on right? I really... Oh, I see it. They took out that tier 2 tower, but I really want them to fight here. I wanted to they're see a huge it. blink in Wrath of Terror from Linky there. But unfortunately, yeah. they're not going to want to fight. It looks like they may... Oh, might look at the back though, Dante. Dante getting incredibly low. Maxon is hot on the heels. Water illusion get a little bit more distance. Undying Love stops the execution. Maxon now faced with all the members of Floor Gaming. Crazy Aussie does get the kill onto Dante. And now Enquad getting quite low there. Pushed up against the Phoenix. But the Beast is going to get him out there. Esca Escapade doesn't manage to land. Rim Spears and Wrath of Terror in towards this you know, Phoenix. Shrek going up onto his cloud. His you know, clone gets taken out pretty darn quickly there. And jumps back to it. Well, his team. That was uh, kind of kind of picked. They all kind of picked their position as to where they wanted to fight here, and just so much damage is coming down, and the healing is going to be able to sustain them for a while. You're gonna have a lot of the healing from Chunga, as well as the protections and healing you're gonna be picking up from the Wisps. Oh, Dante getting taken up by Wizard there. Phoenix gain not all that uh, low at the moment. They're not focusing it. They're just trying to pick off Lord Gaming as quickly as possible as many as possible and then try and go for any objectives. Sense is getting quite low, does get picked up by Maxon. Crazy Aussie healing up his team. They can just keep on going for days with the moonlight with the moonlight dance and the wisp. Phoenix does finally fall. Wizard going quite deep into that Phoenix says hello to the Titan. Wax and Moon can getting, do that. He can getting do incredibly that. He's low. Tanky. Oh Dante getting picked up by Gruff there. Just just so close towards the fountain. Almost saved himself. And now Chiefs are going to go ahead and just back out of this one. I'm really surprised that no one from Chiefs managed to fall in that fight. But again, well, actually, I suppose it's no real surprise given the amount of sustain that they have. Wizard has his self-sustain. Chunga. Um, Rough though. Oh, Rough screen incredibly low. Enquad does pick him up there. That was a That's a needed goal for Law there. They, it doesn't particularly look like they're going to be able to do the fire giant if something breaks out no. there on the side of Chiefs. But it does look like Law are wanting to push forward and show a bit of aggression now that they've taken one. Oh, they've see tasted see blood Enquad. and they want more. And quote game picked up there. Goldie focus down there. Crazy Aussie does get that kill, even though Maxon jumped down on him, getting him incredibly low. Crazy Aussie getting that final little hit in there to secure the kill. That was uh, a little bit... Uh... Overkill? A bit overkill. A little bit of overkill there. <laughs> I don't think Law should have committed as far as they did. Sure, they picked up the kill on Gruff, but the moment that happened, they needed to back off. Oh. Because that... See ya, Shrek. Oh, Shrek's gone. Shrek's gone. The... Oh, no, he's up. He's up. He got out there. He's on top of the cloud. However, he needs to choose his path carefully, because Crazy LZ and Maxon are both watching him. They're not going to even bother with him. He's poked out. Chiefs? He needs to go yeah. back to the well anyway. So that's, Chiefs, that's a win uh... for them. They're just kind of meandering around at the moment. They may be looking to... They are signed up this fire giant here, but it has taken quite a while. 
Census sees them. Census does not want them getting that fire giant. He's he thinks that it, this is not end of the game yet. He wants to keep fighting. Space and time comes out a little bit off center, um, but it does look like Chiefs are going to be able to pick this one up. Oh, Oops. Birdbox coming in, not going to be able to do enough damage. Wrath of Terror and the spears go down, but Wiz is going to be credited to that kill. Um, onto sensors there, and they are going to take the fire giant and look to keep aggressing. Linky Bill misses the pull onto Shrek, but Maxon's chasing him down. Maxon wants him. He just wants him gone. He wants this little monkey bot out of this game so far. Dragon Cole coming out there. So well. much damage onto uh, Shrek. He does get finished off by the wisp. Wisps. The look box the form isn't going to be able to get him out. Look at the flip of the wrist. <laughs> that was, that was, uh, Really, really interesting there. They knew that he didn't have his ultimate because both Crazy and Maxon forced it out of him prior to the Fire Giant engagement. But now we do see a 3v5 breaking out over this mid Phoenix. Lord oh, needs to give this one up. Enqua getting extremely low. And oh, the Undying Love be able stopped him. The Undying Love saved uh, Enqua's life. The Titan knocks down the Ring of Spears from Senses by the looks of it. And Gruff. In the back line, does get the kill onto Dante. Census gain incredibly low. He doesn't have an undying love to save him. However, he has managed to gain out that double pull onto uh, Shrek and I believe Enquad there to try and keep them out of the fountain, but it's just not enough. Chiefs trying to take down this final Phoenix. Yeah, Wiz and, Wizard and Crazy are just sitting there trying to zone out the team from being able to interrupt Gruff, Linky, and Maxon taking that down. But we do see Gruff manage to pick up a kill there onto Census, and Linky getting extremely low. The Fire Giant is going to be able to help him sustain. Enquad is going to credit a kill towards Gruff. And can Goldie get out? Yes, he can. He's going to get back to that well and heal up while Linky sits in the back getting very, very low. F Ultimate forced out by Shrek. And it, Crazy looks like he's waiting for him to land. He really wants to take this one out. They currently don't have enough damage to finish this Titan, nor the minions, but Wiz is going to pull him out of the well and punch him towards Maxon to kill Goldie. The right Phoenix does spawn, but it is going to go down to the minions, and a fight just continually breaking out over this Titan. The ultimate comes through from Crazy Ozzy. They're finding three of them, and he's trying to whittle them down as much as he can, but unfortunately, he just won't be able to outmatch the sustain that they're going to be getting from the well as well as from Dante. Wiz in the thick of it though. Chiefs trying to focus on this uh, Titan ever so casually. They are on a little bit of a headhunt for Lord Gaming. Sansa's gained another kill. Dante falls away of Maxon. Maxon is 16 kills up. And now Shrek just getting pushed up against the wall, just shoved in the face. Execute does come out, does gobble him up there. And now they may be able to finally focus down this Titan. That's going to be game number one. That was just a complete dominant play from Chiefs from the moment that second goal fury happened. Uh, they were kind of neck and neck for then, but um, Chiefs kind of just the trigger and went ham with that and really put, turned on the aggression and came out with the victory of that. A very well-deserved victory, I think. I think there were a few plays where they probably shouldn't have done a few things and same on the side of Law, but it just seems Chiefs were able to capitalize on Law's mistakes more than Law were able to capitalize on the Chiefs. I think it really comes down to the drafting. Law tried to do something a little bit unpeculiar. We did see that they managed to get that first blood after stopping the invade. So, yes, it worked at some times, but it didn't. It couldn't keep up. Dante was getting absolutely bullied out by Gruff in that lane towards that mid portion of the game, and Maxon just from the word go, he was off the chain. Yeah, totally off the chain. He finished that game 17 kills, 2 deaths, and 15 assists. Usually on a high carry, you'd see a very low number of assists. For Maxon to have 15? Wow. Like, that is an incredible amount of assists as well as kills. And he finished that one up with 31k play damage, which is the highest play damage in the entire game. Now, from yeah. one little squishy Alquan. So... Very well played there by Chiefs and by Law. Law really surprised me with their drafting. And it it seemed to work at the beginning of the game, but as the game went on and your more meta-styled team comp got more and more online, it just kind of squashed any hopes that Law really had, which is a bit unfortunate. Yeah. Do you think that Law may be looking to try this again, try sort of a unconventional composition into game number two. I'd or... love to see them try a more <laughs> refined version of it. I'd definitely love to see a more refined version of that because I, I feel like that the early game that they had there, they got first, 
admittedly from something a bit uncharacteristic of Gruff uh, trying to invade at the purple. Usually you see Law Gaming do that. Um, but uh, yeah, as I said, I'd love to see a more refined version of that where they can kind of work out the kinks and, and kind of sit back and understand, rewatch this uh, this game and see what went wrong and how they can fix it. And I think if they can fix that and bust it out in the qualifiers in two weeks, they'll take a couple games. They'll, they'll be taking games off some people that probably thought that they'd have an easy ride against Law. So definitely if they can refine that one down, there will be a bit of a wild card there. Yes, we'll see if they can refine that uh, that uh, composition and their new sort of meta that they're trying out here. In game number two, we will take a short break, take a quick look at our sponsors, and we'll be back with game number two. <laughs> 